Greetings from the apocalypse. So today I thought we would talk a little bit about inner bezels. So I'm getting ready to help Alexis set her beautiful ring. It's got this lovely chunky kind of square cut carnelian that we're gonna fit in there like so. So glowy and nice. Um, but you'll see her ring curved on the bottom so that it fits in the shank, which is very pretty. But what that means is we need to create a curved inner bezel inside there for the stone to have a little flat for it to sit on and be supported when we set it. So uh, Alexa is gonna work on that right now and then I'll show you what that looks like. So we're gonna have to make an inner bezel. So I'm gonna show you how you use a pair of dividers and look at the bezel you have to sort of guesstimate uh, how high your inner bezel needs to be. So Alexis is gonna move in and film over my shoulder. So I have a pair of dividers. They're clunky, I don't like them, but that's okay. So we have to, you see the bottom of the curve right here? Right yep. here? That's where the bottom of the inner bezel is gonna rest. We need to raise the stone so that it will rest. Mm -hmm. Sorry, let me get me some, something better to point with. There we go. So that the stone will rest a little bit above this curved portion because if it hits the curved portion, the stone is gonna rock back and forth because that's pretty much the whole thing that we're trying to avoid here is that we need to get the bottom of the stone up off the curvy part so that when we set, it won't just you know rock back and forth. So, let me show you. So we need the inner bezel to hold the bottom of the stone. Damn you, Sharpie. <laughs> it's okay. All right, we got another one. So we need the bottom of the stone to hit about right there. The inner bezel needs to hold the bottom of my stone basically there because that way I know the bottom of the stone isn't gonna come into physical contact with that curved part, okay? Now, of course, if I think it has to go here, I'm gonna measure it a little higher because you know we want room for, you know, this is a guesstimation. But that's more or less where I want the bottom of my stone to end up. So I can take my dividers, hold it up against here, You see, I can say like, you know what? I'm gonna make it about like that high. That gives me a little extra. Mm -hmm. But this is how I sort of figure these things out. You're just always um, doing your best guesstimation and your dividers. Inner bezels are what we use to hold a stone up inside the outer bezel or the regular bezel if you only have one to keep it at the right height to set. And that varies a good bit stone to stone. And that's actually a topic I'm gonna to cover in another video. Cause I just had somebody the other day, a student say like, I never know. I look at it and I have to have, always call you to go look at it. And like, I never know like what is really the right height. Um, and the short answer is because every stone is different. So you have to sort of make a individual judgment each time, but we'll uh, dig into all that kind of stuff another time. Today, it's about the inner bezels. So you may be more used to thinking about an inner bezel when you're setting a faceted stone because you put the inner bezel in there, it holds the stone at exactly the right height to set. But there are lots of circumstances where you also need an inner bezel for a cabochon. So sometimes the bezel is higher and you need to raise the stone up and you may not want to take the bezel down to its you know like minimum height because you may have decorative items around the side. You know, there's all kinds of designs and situations where the answer isn't just, well, let me just take down the bezel until it's the right height to set and then go ahead and set. Another reason I usually tell people <clears throat> at least earlier in their stages of the project, don't take your bezel down to your minimum height. You know, so many things can happen along the way. You can drop it and ding it and all that kind of thing. Like for me, I never take my bezels down to their minimum height ready to set until it's the absolute last step. It's kind of like, you know, asking God to come down and smite you or saying things like, I'm going to finish this today or, oh, this went really well. You know, like these are the things that there's just no reason to fuck yourself up by tempting fate that way. 
You could actually uh, heat up some Jet Set and press it in there and fill it up level to the right height. And that is one way of doing it. And sometimes if I have stones that are very irregular on the bottom, sort of like very problematic, I will do that. Now that's not as quick as you might think because you have to get exactly the right amount of Jet Set in there. So usually like you shove some in, oh, too much. You know, takes them out, oh, too little, you know, and you kind of go back and forth. Uh, not that that's the end of the world, but, and also then you have to take like a nice dowel or something and really press on the top so that you get a level surface to sit your stone on. But that is a way to deal with, you know, filling in a little space on a curved bezel or just accommodating a real funky stone. So in this particular case though, uh, I had Alexis make an inner bezel. I'm gonna show you a close up of it because this lovely carnelian, has a little bit, I'll show you a close up a bit too, not just hold it up over my nose, but it has a little bit of curve on the bottom. It like has a little tummy. Who doesn't? So we need to accommodate for that when we set, because even if let's say this ring was completely flat on the bottom to, you know, to start with, whenever you have a cabochon with a curved bottom, you need to do something to accommodate for that. Now, normally I just put a wire in there around the edge to serve as like a little inner bezel to kind of like hold the edges so that the little tubby can hang and not come in contact with the bottom. And in that way, then it can be held really firmly because if the curved bottom touches, you know, when you set, it'll kind of like press and then press, you know what I mean? You'll kind of go back and forth and back and forth. And if you've ever had that um, shitty experience. You set and 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 hammer and hammer and hammer and it still moves. You know what I mean? Because basically you've created like a little seesaw, you know, so it'll just keep going back and forth. Definitely not what you want. So since this has a curved bottom and actually our bezel in here has a curved top, we've got two curves to deal with. So what we're going to do is we've made an inner bezel that fits inside there and we curved the bottom of it and we basically have sanded it down so that when the stone rests on it, there's a little gap between the tummy of the stone. Uh, I don't think tummy is a technical term, but it seems like the most logical thing, uh, most logical way to explain it. Uh, but to keep the curve of the little tummy and the curve of the bottom of the bezel away from each other. Because again, you put any of those curves together and the stone's gonna rock back and forth and we won't be able to set it really firmly. So here's the ring all set up in Jet Set, which uh, you probably remember us doing. And here is the inner bezel that we've made. So you can see the inside of this is curved. So that's something we had to accommodate. So basically what we did is we took our dividers and we measured the height on here, like a, basically a height that I knew that the bottom of the stone would be clearing this. But you know, when you make uh, guesstimations like that, you know, you always leave an extra because if you're wrong, who cares? Take a little down. If you don't have enough, you've got to start over. And although starting over is not necessarily a tragedy of epic proportions, that's definitely not it's not the way that I want to set myself up. I generally try to not put myself in a position that like if everything doesn't go perfect, I'm screwed because how often in life does everything go perfect? So I try to just like build that into every process that I'm doing. So you see what we did is we made an inner bezel and then we curved the inside. Now all we did is we took a dowel with the same basic curve as we've got going on underneath the bezel here, and we just sanded it. Now, the sanding can take a while, so you can also use a burr, a larger burr, um, especially like a cylinder burr, which I'll go grab one and show you. But the most important thing is that you get enough of a curve in here that it'll curve over this, but then you notice there's enough bezel up here that's left to hold the stone. So basically, my little tummy of the stone is gonna end up hanging somewhere in between this top and this curve, right in there. And what we did was, like I said before, we made it higher and we sanded it down a bit and we put it in and we tried it with the stone and we put it in and tried a bit and checked with the stone because I wanted to make sure if we sanded down too much, we would end up bumping into this and then again, our bezel would be too low and we would have to start over, which, you know, 
uh, contraindicated most of the time. So you see how this looks? I mean, basically she soldered it together first, by the way, just to point that out, and shaped it to fit in. And then we put the curve on both sides. So you see it fits in there just like that. Now, this does fit quite nicely, but remember one thing when you're making an inner bezel, it actually doesn't have to be an absolute hermetic seal. Like, yes, you want a good fit. You don't want it to wiggle around too much, but sometimes I think actually students get a little too caught up in like, if it's so tight that you really have a hard time getting it in and out, you're really just gonna struggle because when you're, you know, sizing uh, an inner bezel and fitting the stone in to get the height right, I mean, you're gonna be doing it again, you know, like you do a little something and you put the stone in and you do a little something and you put the stone in and you do a little something and you put the stone in. So if you make this so tight that you're really fighting it to get it in and out, you're gonna go completely berserker, which, you know, again, uh, I don't recommend. So let me just show you how well this fits. We're also going to um, shine the bottom of the inside, like we'll probably, put a piece of very highly polished fine silver curved on the bottom or a piece of mylar just to reflect the light up through the stone. But if you take a look, there's the stone. Find the right way that it fits in and always give it a nice press and I'll just sort of angle this to the side so that you can see. So now it's not rocking back and forth, so I know I don't have that like bad, naughty tummy contact that I don't want. And it's at a good height to set. So basically our next mission will be to go ahead and set the stone. But you know, uh, not to get all philosophical on you, but like think about it, like the inner bezel is like your foundation. If your foundation is crooked or you have a problem with it, your setting isn't gonna go well. So you always wanna like kind of take a breath, calm down, you know, and relax and spend whatever time is necessary to get your foundation right. Because sort of leaping right ahead to the setting portion really won't help you if you don't have an inner bezel in there that's gonna do the job you need it to do. So Alexis did a lovely job on this and we're ready to set. And you can see, ta-da! It looks great. So the next video, I'll show you how to actually set it, but just always remember the earlier steps are m much more important than the later steps. I mean, you know, everything's important, of course, but if you take your time with the earlier stuff, the steps that happen later, like the actual setting of this, you'll notice is gonna go quite quickly because we've got a nice tight fitting bezel, inner bezel's at the right height, it's nice and level, you know what I mean, et cetera, et cetera. And all of that is just gonna facilitate our setting so that part of it becomes pretty fast and easy. That's it for today, so tune in next time when we actually set the stone.